pass this around and this is um, a campaign standard <laughs> for us, which is somebody's hurting uh, my brother or somebody's hurting my people. Um, if you all like to sing along, what we do in person, which we haven't done for a while, <laughs> tried it on Zoom many times, <laughs> doesn't work, uh, is I will say, you can sing the whole, you can sing it all if you know it, or I'll say, I'll start it with somebody's hurting my brother, and then you would say, and it's gone on far too long. And it's gone on far too long, it's gone on far too long, somebody's hurting my brother, it's gone on far too long, and then all together, and we won't be silent anymore. So we'll do the first line and then please, please join in. Let's see, I'm gonna keep this so I know the order. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Somebody's hurting my brother and it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. It's gone on. Somebody's hurting my brother, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Somebody's hurting my sister, and it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on. Far too long. You know that it's gone on. Somebody's hurting my sister, and it's gone on. Far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Somebody's hurting the children, and it's gone on. Far too long. I tell you, it's gone on. Far too long. Yes, it's gone on. Far too long. Well, somebody's hurting the children, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Somebody's poisoning the water, and it's gone on far too long. You know that it's gone on far too long. I tell you, it's gone on. Far too long. Somebody's poisoning the water, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Somebody's denying our health care, and it's gone on far too long. Well, it's gone on far too long. You know that it's gone on far too long. Somebody's denying our health care, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Nobody's housing the homeless, and it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. I tell you, it's gone on. Far too long. Well, nobody's housing the homeless, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Nobody's feeding the hungry, and it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. You know that it's gone on. Far too long. Nobody's feeding the hungry, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Somebody's suppressing the voters, and it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. I tell you, it's gone on. Far Somebody's suppressing the odors, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Somebody's hurting poor people, and it's gone on far too long. 
tell you it's gone on. Far too long. You know that it's gone on. Far too long. Somebody's hurting poor people and it's gone on. Far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. One more time. Somebody's hurting our people and it's gone on. Far too long. Yes, it's gone on. Far too long. You know that it's gone on. Far too long. Somebody's hurting our people and it's gone on. Far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. No, we won't be silent anymore. No, we won't be silent anymore. Thank you very much. So, Maine Poor People's Campaign here. We have been here in Maine since 2018 when the national campaign revived. This, this is a revival of Martin Luther King and the movement ancestors before us in 1968. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King connected things. He said that we will never end racism unless we also end militarism, unless we also end poverty. And the campaign today also has added that we will not end all of those unless we also end ecological devastation. And if we do not end this distorted moral narrative that we live in today in this country. And so the campaign has existed here in Maine for three years. We are a movement, not an organization. We are a movement that is building power. We stood on the steps in Maine at the Blaine House and people were arrested in 2018 and were arrested not just in Maine, but in capitals across this nation in the largest mass demonstration of civil disobedience that this century has seen thus far. Because people are coming together because we are sick and tired of racism, of poverty, of militarism, of ecological devastation and a distorted moral narrative. We took a truth and poverty tour around Maine, listening to people who are the most impacted by these systemic evils. And we then, uh, and we have been organizing grassroots around the state of Maine since then, using big events like when the national co-chairs came to visit in Maine um, and marched down the streets and shut down Portland briefly. And we had our first national, we sent people from Maine down to the National People's Congress in 2019, of which there will be another. Last year, we had a mass digital gathering that we organized together here in Maine. It was going to be in person, but if, if COVID had not happened, we would have not reached the almost 3 million people nationwide to build this movement. And now we are asking everyone to join us in building this movement here in Maine. We are building towards next Monday when we announce that um, there will be a resolution put forward in Congress by the Poor People's Campaign to end poverty. And we cannot end poverty without the, ending those other evils. And so we are building a movement and I have and when you build a movement, you can't have one speaker in the movement. We have, there are multiple of us who will speak to what this movement is and does. So I think I am passing it to Josh. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Joshua Coppola. Use they, them pronouns. Um, uh, with the main Poor People's Campaign. And, yeah, so uh, uh, one of the things I want to talk about is, is what I ended my last comments with is when we lift from the bottom, we all rise. That's, that's something we really believe in in the Poor People's Campaign. We, we recognize that the solutions uh, to the problems of our society need to come from those most impacted. 
Um, and as we organize uh, here in Maine, we're, we're listening to the folks that, that are impacted by these systems of injustice. Um, up in the city of Bangor, we are uh, organizing with the Greater Bangor Housing Coalition, which is a, a number of groups coming together to uh, m improve conditions for those experiencing homelessness and advocating um, directly with the city by lifting voices. Um, and one of another leaders, as, as Katie mentioned, we're a, a nationwide movement. Uh, one of the, the leaders from Arkansas, Reverend Dr. Annika Whitfield, says, uh, you know, people ask, why are we the poor people's campaign? Why can't you just be the people's campaign? And we say, well, we're not here to put a label on. We're here to take a label off. Because, because we know that uh, there are more folks that are poor than identify as poor because the poverty measure in this country is broken. Um, it, in Maine right now, there are 454,000 and growing poor and low income folks. That ain't right. That ain't, that ain't right. right. This, this COVID-19 pandemic has, has uh, laid bare the fracture of society. Um, and we see how uh, these divisions uh, break open uh, along historical lines of division. And we know as a campaign that uh, organizations have a role in a movement, but a movement needs to be more than an organization, that we believe in uh, uh, testimony and not titles, that, that lived experience is what uh, created the, mor the people's moral budget um, which is the organizing tool uh, that we've been working on for a number of years that came out of conversations across the country. And for me, I've been involved in a number of different uh, activist fields uh, from, from ecological devastation to labor rights. And, and I realized that, you know, I have cousins that went to work in the oil fields because they were the only good paying jobs. And these are, these are folks that um, love the outdoors and wouldn't want an oil spill where they hunt and where they fish. But as long as there are poor folks, there will be exploitative industries that will use that poverty to put them in dangerous situations that destroy our communities and destroy our environment. So we, we really believe that uh, We've got to organize wide, and we've got to organize deep, and, uh, and that, yeah, we continue to bring voices up that have been silenced. Um, so I'll pass it on to Mindy next. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mindy, and um, I, so, <laughs> sorry, I didn't think this through. I didn't write anything down. I should have written down. Um, so I am a one of the, the over 400,000 poor or low income people that uh, was referenced before. Um, I've worked at McDonald's for 18 years. Um, and I make 25 cents more than um, starting pay at my location which just went up to um, $13. So, um, one of the things, <laughs> so, so one of the things I wanted to talk about a little bit was how I came to this movement. Um, I personally started my activism in the realm of uh, reproductive rights, women's rights. You know, we all have our niche thing that we really are passionate about, and that's where I started. But after the election um, in 2016, um, I and uh, actually also Aubrey were kind of looking for a place that dealt with all the issues that we knew were going, that have been around forever and that we knew were going to get much worse. Um, you know, different you, you can work on a campaign, I've done that before, you know, you're working for um, a candidate, 
you know, or you're working for a single issue, you're working for to pass a um, specific bill, and then that's it. And we wanted a place that was going to be doing all the things that we cared about and a place that was playing the long game, you know, that was, that was here for the long haul. And that was the Poor People's Campaign. So that's how we both ended up here. Um, and a big part of the Poor People's Campaign is fusion organizing. So working to cross divisions, lines of division, wherever they are. You know, the system is really good at dividing us. And the work of this campaign is to unite in people who are impacted by all of these um, systemic evils. You know, the divisions are everywhere. I, I mentioned that I work at McDonald's and you see poor people against poor people there. You know, everyone is complaining right now because the folks that lost their job in the middle of a pandemic are still getting unemployment, which means people are not lining up necessarily for really crappy paying jobs like the one I'm at. And, and people are celebrating the fact that folks will be forced back to work and we might be able to hire some more people at my job. These are, these are um, people who, who need, you know, are, are on, on unemployment because their kids aren't going to work full time, you know, and they can't, you know, necessarily work. These are people who lost better paying jobs, you know, who, who shouldn't have to go work for $13 an hour, you know? Um, but, but, you know, you have people who are making $13 an hour rejoicing that folks are going to, going to have to face their struggle. And you also have people who have been so broken down by this system, which really isn't broken per se. It works really well at keeping poor people poor and blaming themselves and not believing that they de deserve better. Um, so you have folks saying, well, I'm just a burger flipper. I, you know, I make all right money, you know, says the kid who's, you know, living at home. They deserve better, you know. We tell people, go to college, right? Go to college so you can snap your fingers and get a better job, right? right? But we pay the people, you know, stereotypi stereotypically, you know, you assume it's teenagers, right, working at McDonald's, that's what you hear a lot. So we pay those teenagers so little they can't afford to go to college to get the job, the degree to get the job so they won't be poor for the rest of their lives, right? That ain't right. That ain't right. So, I mean, you see, you see, it's not just divisions of, of folks who are doing really well and are rich and whatever um, against folks like us. You know, we've all been kind of pitted against each other and that's, you know, the work of the Poor People's Campaign is, is crossing all those lines of division wherever they're found. Um, and I think that's one of the things that makes us really um, different and, and why I'm here. So yeah, I'm gonna shut up now. Thank you. <laughs> I'm pissed off and I'm sure that you are too. I'm mad as hell. We all have only one life to live, and that life is connected to all other lives and all other life that has ever been and that will ever be. This is so clear to me, and it baffles me that it's so murky to so many. What is life for if not to live life for life itself? It pisses me off that we are forced to live our one life in this immoral system that determines our worth based on how much money we can spend and how much money we can make for other people. It pisses me off that we have the technology and means to eradicate poverty completely and guarantee everyone's inherent right to life, and we don't. It pisses me off that life is not prioritized when profit and power are. 
It pisses me off that so, that so many are too content to take action. It pisses me off that the most immoral of human pursuits are prioritized in our nation's budget. Budgets are moral statements, and what we've seen and heard about today is a glaring glimpse of how immoral our system is. However, I'm excited whenever I see two or more people lear te talking, learning, and teaching about justice. I'm excited whenever I see people radicalizing themselves. I'm excited whenever truth is spoken to power. I'm excited whenever a poor or marginalized person is empowered. And I'm excited when a poor or marginalized person is heard, listened to, believed, followed. And I'm excited when people in organizations realize and understand fusion organizing. Whenever people in organi organizations like, like these come out of our silos, realizing that it is necessary for all of us to work on all of these issues because they are all one issue. While we all have a lot to learn about injustices in our state, the nation, and the world, we also must understand that we all have a lot to learn about ourselves and the ways that we contribute to injustice. We are building a nonviolent army of wounded healers and growing a movement for moral revolution of values. And we demand a budget that prioritizes life's inherent right to live. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. This is another Poor People's Campaign Standard. Uh, everybody's got a right to live. It's very simple. Um, so go. Everybody's got a right to live. Everybody's got a right to live. And before this campaign fails, We'll all go down to jail. Everybody's got a right to live. Sing, sing with me, sing with me. I'm excited that people are singing with me here, but not on the computer. <laughs> it's a bummer. All right. Everybody's got a right to live. Everybody's got a right to live. And before this campaign fails, we'll all go down to jail. Everybody's got a right to live. Everybody's got a right to love. Everybody's got a right to love. And before this campaign fails, we'll all go down to jail. Everybody's got a right to love. Everybody's got a right to learn. Everybody's got a right to learn. And before this campaign fails, we'll all go down to jail. Everybody's got a right to learn. Everybody's got a right to help. Everybody's got a right to health And before this campaign fails We'll all go down to jail Cause everybody's got a right to health Everybody's got a right to vote Everybody's got a right to vote And before this campaign fails We'll all go down to jail Cause everybody's got a right to vote. Everybody's got a right to dream. Everybody's got a right to dream. And before this campaign fails, we'll all go down to jail. Cause everybody's got a right to dream. Everybody's got a right to be. Everybody's got a right to be. And before this campaign fails, we'll all go down to jail. Everybody's got a right to be. Everybody's got a right to live. Everybody's got a right to live. And before this campaign fails, we'll all go down to jail. Everybody's got a right to live. Everybody's got a right to live. Everybody's got a right to live. Thanks, everybody.